imagine for a second that you are not sitting here in one of the most fortunate and wettest places in the world, but that you are sitting on your bike on a dirt road in Kenya. Each day, you have to travel for 20 kilometers just to get enough water for that day. And often, you have to travel for longer. Sometimes, you fail and you have to return with dirty water or no water at all. This is the reality for two-thirds of a billion people. And every day, almost a thousand children under the age of five die from diarrheal disease caused by unsafe drinking water. Water insecurity is one of humankind's most pressing challenges. What if, before you started your quest for water that day, you know, knew exactly where to go, and when you got there, the sustainability of your well was improved? What if getting clean drinking water was no quest at all? This is exactly the problem that REACH, an Oxford University project, is trying to solve using inexpensive sensors, mobile technology, and the cloud. The pump handles are equipped with sensors. The sensor sends data wirelessly through the internet to the cloud, and in the cloud, the data points are processed and turned into real, actionable information about water levels, pump usage, operations, etc. The data points that are flowing through to the cloud are too many to be solved by an ordinary computer. And that's where the cloud plays a crucial role. Saying that I am enthusiastic and, and optimistic about how you can use the cloud or use, use technology to improve people's lives is an understatement. I believe that technology can help us solve the many challenges that we face on this planet. When I was a kid, technology was like magic, not the cheap tricks that puzzles you and makes you laugh, but something real that had the power to change the world, something that empowered us with abilities beyond what we were born with, something that turned us into superheroes. Because technology impacts everything we do. And in line, in, in, in line with the theme of this conference, it has the power to disrupt the norm. The story from Kenya is just one example of how the cloud can have a huge positive impact. What makes the cloud so exciting is that it's at the center of the digital revolution that is happening all around us. And that it's available to everyone everywhere. For the, first, uh, for the first time in our history. That means that the opportunity to innovate, to improve our surrounding is available to everyone. I believe it represents the biggest opportunity of our lifetime. And it's my hope for this talk that you share this idea that no matter what you do or what your uh, field of work is, that you'll start to think about how you can use the cloud because what you can do with the cloud is too powerful to leave only to people like me, the technologists. When I uh, travel around and talk to people about the cloud and ask them what it is, the most common answer is, is where I store my pictures. Followed by, I don't understand it, and I probably could not get my pictures back if I lost my phone. And yes, they are right. You can use the cloud to store pictures, but it's a lot more powerful than that. My goal for this talk is to get you as excited about the cloud as I am, or at least get you interested. So let's first start by demystifying the cloud. The first thing I suggest we do is that we uh, start by using something more familiar. I guess everyone knows what a computer is. It has a processor or a brain, 
it can store and process information. You can um, run programs and games, and you can interact with it using a mouse, a keyboard, voice, or gestures. Based on this, you could say that the cloud is a really, really, really big computer, big enough to fit 747 airplanes inside it in rows and columns, looking something like this. But there are four unique characteristics that makes the cloud more than just a big computer. First, you don't have to buy it. You only pay for what you use. Second, it has virtually unlimited capacity for processing and storage. Three, it contains super advanced tools and, uh, uh, and building blocks that are simple to use. And four, it can mimic our brain so that it can reason and learn. So let's dive into those four areas. Getting started with no upfront cost, that's a revolution. Compute power has now become like a utility, like electricity. Before the cloud, when you wanted to explore an idea or start a company, you had to invest thousands, maybe millions of dollars just to get started. With the cloud, you can get access for free and you can start to use it and only pay for what you use per, per the minute. And as little as a few cents per unit. And you can start using this capacity using only an ordinary uh, computer or even a smartphone. And that means that the barrier, the cost barrier for innovation has been set to almost zero. Second, unlimited capacity. Unlimited capacity. So let's say you have an idea, and your idea takes off, and you get a million users from around the globe. Ordinarily, that's a super critical time with a large chance of failure. Using the cloud, it's no problem. Because being the biggest computer in the world, it will just automatically take care of everything and you don't have to do anything. But unlimited capacity also have another huge advantage, and it allows you to think differently about problems. There are problems that are almost impossible to solve, or certainly impractical, unless you have the capacity needed to solve them. Let's use the Human Genome Project as an example. It took 13 years to map the first genome, costing billions of dollars. Less than a decade later, mapping the second genome reduced the time and cost of mapping it by a million. Today, using the vast capacity of the cloud, you can now map your and my genome in a matter of days, costing as little as a few thousand dollars. Opening up for new and innovative approaches and personalized treatments for things like cancer and other diseases. The third characteristic of the, characteristic of the cloud is that it contains super advanced building blocks that are simple to use. The cloud represents decades of innovation, computer science, computer practices, and innovation. In the analogy of standing on the shoulder of giants, this is like standing on, a, on the shoulder of a giant the size of Mount Everest. The cloud is a virtual ecosystem of solutions, tools, data, and they can all be discovered through an app store. And you can puzzle these pieces together and mix and match them by using simple programming. So if you have an idea, you can form a small team and you can mix and match the components much faster and a lot less risk than before. Let's say you had a an idea of a better way to connect people with transportation. You would need something like location-based services, you would need maps, you would need the billing system, etc., etc. All of these are already available in the cloud. And you can form a small team, put them together, and you could be up and running very quickly and certainly a lot faster 
than if you had to build all the components for yourself. The fourth and probably the most exciting part that makes the cloud more than just a big computer is its ability to mimic our human brains. This is often referred to as artificial intelligence or AI. And it's based actually on principles discovered as early as in the 1950s. But it's only now been made practical because of the capacity of the cloud. The way it works is that um, these deep learning techniques are programmed into the cloud uh, using algorithms or recipes, if you like, for what to do with information. Then information is being pushed through the algorithms and gradually the cloud starts to recognize patterns and start to reason and make predictions on its own. And this is opposite of in the past where every response needed to be programmed. What makes it practical is that all this brain is available to everyone through simple interfaces. And that, again, allows the, the, the cloud to improve and learn. So what are the implications? You may have heard of self-driving cars. Self-driving cars rely on computer visions and sensors and, uh, and to, to, to make the right responses. So how it works is that what the car sees and senses is brought up into the cloud and uh, the right response is based on then millions of miles of road traveled. You could say that the car then gets equipped with a driver or a co-pilot that in experience surpasses the most experienced driver on the planet. Just imagine what that can do to reduce serious uh, traffic-related death and injuries. And there you have it. So the next time somebody asks you what the cloud is, you could say it's a, it's a really big computer that you don't have to buy, that has all the capacity that you ever need, and that you, uh, uh, has great building blocks and tools, and it can reason and learn. Not that hard at all. So I hope you agree with me that the cloud is amazing. But you might still wonder how it can help you save the world or change the world. In short, the cloud has amazing capabilities. If you use these powers, you become a superhero. And we all know that superheroes can change the world. Let me give you an example. A few colleagues of mine got together to solve a challenge that millions of people face every day. This is Saqib. He lost the use of his eyes when he was seven. And when he walks into a room, he wants to know the same things as we do. You know, where's an empty seat? Who's that person walking up to me? What does that sign say? The team formed Project Seeing AI, and the idea was simple. Create a seeing assistant that was able to describe a person's surroundings and even people's emotions using the computer vision and natural language capabilities of the cloud. The way it works is that Saki can take a picture using an app uh, and a camera or a specialized glasses. The pictures are being sent to the cloud, where it's been analyzed. And here you see how it's analyzed. And the information is then read back to him. Think about seeing without being, being relying on having a person following you around. Imagine the confidence and freedom that gives. Pretty close to magic. Every day, companies, governments, nonprofit organizations, and startups is using the cloud to change, disrupt, and improve. That makes the cloud the biggest change agent of our time, and it's available to everyone everywhere. The means of production have been democratized. 
we live in an amazing world. The advances we made through technology is astonishing. Think about transportation. Flying, space travel. From people living just a hundred years ago, our lives are the lives of our, our science fiction. Think about medicine. We've been able to map the human genome, and we have new cures and, and personalized cures for cancer. Think about communication. We have virtually connected everyone on the planet through the internet. And yet, only a decade ago, our abilities are the stuff of dreams and magic. A true testament of human ingenuity and spirit. And yet, all of this have been achieved by only using a small fraction of the potential that lies in using all of us. But using the really big computer called the cloud and making its abilities our own, we can become superheroes that can change the world. You can use the vast comp computational powers of the cloud to uh, find a cure for cancer. You can use the image and pattern recognition capabilities to solve problems that, were f that before was unsolvable. Or you can help improve millions of people's lives by securing clean water. Just imagine the possibilities. Thank you.